some temptations so that we can always make the right choices. We're literally placed in times of battles. God literally will take us out to the desert to fight. Very interesting why this is so important to understand because if I try to fight the devil in my own home turf, in where I am feeling blessed, the devil does nothing, wants to do nothing more than to rob me. Of, and he does it by all the distractions that are around me. Warfare is to be taking place out in the middle of where I have no distractions. So that my full concentration can be strategically on what the devil's trying to do against me and my house. Now listen, I'm talking about house because I've been given the responsibility in my household to take care of it. I'm the gatekeeper of my house. And so you have to understand that he leads me into the desert so that I can strategically overview and see prospectively from heaven's perspective what the devil's attempts are in destroying me and my family's lives. Now, that's an incredible military st strategy that God will lead you out so that you can literally see everything that the devil's trying to do against you. See, because in my comfort, I'm too busy being comfortable, and, and there's so many distractions. But when I'm uncomfortable, I pay more attention to what's going on in my life. Make sense? Come on, turn on and tell somebody, boy, that, that makes sense to me now. I can literally see, I, I look, I'm seeing things now that I did not see before. Because God has literally has, has opened your heart and eyes strategically so that you can see what the devil is trying to do against you. Now, he, he doesn't just leave you out there hanging, but literally he begins to teach you how to fight. He says, just ask him my name. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I've given you power to overcome the world, Jesus said. I give you the ability. Use my word. Didn't the Bible say in Luke 4 that Jesus used the word against him? Isn't that awesome? And so what is he teaching you how to do? How to overcome? How to overcome? You and I will never learn how to overcome unless we go through a battle. You know what? The devil might beat you up one day. How many know you're going to be smarter tomorrow? Literally. How many of you ever fought when you were in school? How many of you that used to instigate everything? How many of you are twins and you used to double up on people? Orphan. <laughs> no, but the truth of it is, is that you literally... He teaches you how to overcome, how to fight. And, and that's important that you understand that he's teaching you to overcome. Now, I want you to know that you learn to overcome this, you'll learn to overcome that. And, and, and so it's important that he'll lead you into the desert in the time to get you into where you're battling so that you're prepared for the major fight. What's the major fight? Your household. I'm taking care of business in my house. How many of you like this stuff? This stuff is good. Number three. Number three. I love number three. It's just scary. Number three is this. That he takes us out into the desert so that we would learn discipline. That we learn discipline and the art of depending on God. That we learn discipline and also the art of depending on God, literally. Because up until we know Jesus, all we could count on was ourselves. We counted on ourselves to help us do things. That we counted on our work to make sure that it was going to supply, to give us what we needed in this life to take care of our family. We depend upon alcohol or drugs or whatever the addiction may be to gratify ourselves. Uh, we, we depend solely on ourselves, on our own strength. But the Bible helps me understand, not by mind nor by my power, by the Spirit. 
Spirit of God. And so literally, there are things, and part of maturing and growing up is learning how to be disciplined in our life. We're not disciplined. How many of you would walk you down the street, find a $20 bill, and pick it up and go buy yourself something at that very moment? <laughs> Praise God! He gave me $20! Hey, let's go eat. Come in. Let's go somewhere. You know? Who, who's, you know, there are some who are disciplined and find the 20 and say, you know what? Thank you, Lord. I'm going to take that 20. I'm going to hold on to it, put it in my sock door, wait and see where God would have me to invest it in. You know, discipline. Discipline. How many of you, and I know because many of us are hungry, lunch is coming, but we'd sit down at the dinner table and literally what we would do is we would serve ourselves two to three times more than what we should. Okay. Now listen, I know that's kind of funny, but I'm talking about the insignificant things that we need to work on and be disciplined. If we have a hard time doing that in the flesh, how about in the spiritual realm? We have a hard time praying. We have a hard time reading the Bible. We have a hard time coming to church faithfully. We have a hard time just preparing ourselves spiritually. And literally, what God is interested again is in our spiritual maturity in our what? Character. More so than he is in our, and so he's, he wants us to get to that level because we're disciplined enough because our family and our household is at stake. And, and I need to be disciplined enough as a gatekeeper to stand my ground that I would not move away from it, allowing the devil to come around and attack and hinder and harm my household. Amen. So I need to be careful and be disciplined in my life. That's important. I need to be disciplined. I need to teach my children to be disciplined spiritually, physically, emotionally disciplined. Not only that, He puts us out there so we can totally depend upon God. Why do we need to totally depend upon God? Number one, we need to realize that God created us. If God created us, then He's accountable to us. If He's accountable to us, us being those that He created, we're accountable to who? To him. Everything we say and do, we will be accountable to God. Everything. Everything. And there are, the book of Revelation says that there are books and then a book that will be opened up on the day of judgment. What are those books? Well, we know the book is the Lamb's book of life, but the books are the journals of your life. Ooh. Talk about evaluation. You know what's at stake? Heaven or hell. And so the bottom line is, is total surrender to God is total dependency upon God. I literally surrender everything to God. You know, God, I, you know, what's mine is yours. That's just it. My household is yours. My life is yours. The vehicle I drive is yours. And so the next time when you're, you're angry at your car, for not wanting to start, or for whatever it may be, say, God, you gave me this vehicle, now it's up to you to get me where I need to go. So let me say this, you know what that does? Is that when total surrender is surrendered to God, then everything, everything on earth has to align itself to God's will. What is God's will for your life? That you be prosperous, that you have peace, that you have joy and understanding. So everything that is with you has to line up with His will. That's what total surrender does. Total surrender does that, and guess what? You have favor upon your life. 